Welcome everyone to today's video. I also wanted to make another test as I mentioned in my Ryzen Mini ITX build video. Ideally I would want to run this without VGA card. It also turned out this extremely old-fashioned and relabeled. It's actually not an R5 something per se, it's this previous generation HD whatever. However this passive cooled card even gets super hot. And as I mentioned ideally I would want to run such servers headless anyway. So after this initial setup, let's try and take the VGA card out and see if it still boots. As we have no VGA output anymore, we will only see if this works from hard drive access and then being able to log in here. Okay, we got some hard drive access. There is at least some hope that this BIOS is alive and doing something. So this should be grub loading the Linux kernel. That should mean that this indeed boots. I was slightly irritated and not very convinced that this would work because the internet is full of gamers and PC administrators saying that this wouldn't work. So on various forums and such they mentioned that it wouldn't work and I thought if they mentioned this they would have tested this and have some real experience on this but as it turns out So this is indeed our Ryzen here, without any VGA in the PCI section. So yeah, that works, that is cool and uh, this certainly means less unnecessary heat and everything in the server node and such. As an added bonus for our experience and education I ordered a PCIe to PCI adapter bridge here and not sure if many of you know this exists so this just arrived just unpacked a second ago so this is a bridge that actually I was hoping for this PLX or what it is so this is some um, S media let's hope they know what they're doing and I wanted to try if we get VGA in the BIOS from an old-fashioned non afe PC BIOS kind of style stuff so let's switch this off, plug this in and see if this has a chance to work. They actually list this for VGA but also network and sound card. So if you have some cool vintage sound card or something or some studio equipment, network stuff, I don't see the point very much. But for me this is more having more flexibility for testing with vintage stuff, VGA cards and maybe sound cards or something like that or interface cards, you know, special I.O. whatever stuff. I may not have a low profile card, so let's try the next best year some Matrox card from my vintage archive. Of course, by the way, do we or do we not? Or pity. Uh, this does not fit with this at least. We only using low profile cards then. Hmm. Okay, slightly less powerful. The Matrox I had in my hands a second ago was too big and I don't want to disassemble the whole storage case again. So this 3D charger thing for a test. This is not entirely low profile, but I think this has a chance to fit there. Hmm, what is... This does not really... Why does this not really fit? Hmm, could fit or not. This was here. No, I think it somehow yeah, it does not fit super nicely there. Let's see, do we get this in there? Well enough inside. Maybe, however, I should have used a cheaper older build for this. Of course this should best be screwed in not to be so fragile. Some power. So, let's try what happens. So, I guess that means it may not work. Oh no, we have VGA. Oh, no keyboard. Well, we have, we have indeed posts. Wow. I, a while and I did not really expect it. Um, 
now we boot Linux already. Uh, keyboard. So actually, I was not really sure if that would work. I guess this EFI compatibility module thing is taking care of that. So this indeed works. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. So this means we have plenty of vintage stock of VGA cards to use with this adapter. Um, let this with our look in here. Hmm. Link is coming up somehow. The Intel Ethernet card does not like this switch very much. Funny how they read respectively. Changed the ATI ID to AMD, so although it's a super old Mach 65 3D Rage 2 Plus DVD, it's listed as AMD. But uh, yeah, frame buffer running, of course. Actually, it says IFI. This is interesting that this is coming through as IFI. Um, really interesting. IFI frame buffer. Hmm, really interesting that this is so backward compatible that this works over IFI. I would have thought that going through this compatibility module stuff, it's not really IFI then, but okay. This probably also means we can fully use the BIOS. Yeah, so there you have it. Using the BIOS on a totally low resolution, barely readable. Yeah, and by the way, there's this hanging. Some, something is strange. As I said in my other vintage videos, something is strange with the VGA circuitry here and the analog input of this display that sometimes it's hanging. I really wonder why that is happening. That you have also seen on the SG Octane, on the Spark Station, and, and so on. So, yeah, as you can see, the text is not the most sharp. By the way, what is this? Graphic card info showing here. PCI. Hmm. Not much, huh? Not the most high resolution. What is it anyway? What is the display things? Ah, 640 by 480. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Not only does such iffy motherboards, in contrast to popular opinion, still boot without VGA card installed for your headless server needs, you can even use this PCIe to PCI bridges to use totally vintage cards for maintenance and fun and retro stuff. I hope you enjoy this state of the art yet vintage tinkering and additional rare information. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. This obviously is super fragile, so as soon as you touch it, you twist a small strip of metal. I will probably not screw this back, as it otherwise will only get bent every day anyway.